Hello everyone, and I'm uh, reviving an old series that I haven't gotten to in a while. It's the uh, Rockstar Expression series. I'm just going to talk here into the uh, microphone, into the camera. And uh, recently read a post talking about uh, female singers in bachata and why there aren't that many relative to men. So I kind of wrote down a bunch of thoughts I had about gender equality and sort of the subject of it in dance and in music and um i think i kind of want to start by saying i feel like a lot of the subject matter of these songs is romantic in nature and it's typically a guy kind of singing to a girl you know she's the most amazing thing ever or she did me wrong i don't believe in love anymore we were meant to be what the hell happened um we were destined to be apart or we were destined to be together like we're two ships passing and we meet and ba da 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 and so there's there's a lot of romance there's a lot of passion in it one way or the other good or bad not really the point um but it seems like it's definitely directed at women and so i think it's natural that since the subject matter is women that the singers would be men so while I think there isn't any quality there, I don't think it's something intentional. I don't think it's something systematic where they're trying to like keep women down. I just feel like like Latin culture, um, it's romance, it's passion is sort of the main attraction of the dance uh, and the music. And so typically in those cultures, you have a lot of um, sort of traditional stylized romance involved in the subject matter. And hence, it's going to be men typically wooing women, and women typically trying to be the um, receivers of said affection, sort of the attractors, I guess. And um, hence, songs written by men to women, I mean, they're just going to come out more often. And so, while I would love to see more sort of gender equality, definitely more female singers, I don't think it's something sort of systematic within the Latin culture or within dance or within anything that's sort of making that happen. I think it's just one of those things where it's kind of just been traditionally this way. I don't know, call me crazy. Um, but like I said, we are living in a very progressive world and uh, I think things are definitely changing. But I, I think we kind of need to understand that bachata music and I think Latin music in general has been coming, you know, comes from the generations of the past comes from a world that isn't as sort of progressive or forward with their thinking. And so these are sort of the songs that come out of, you know, this traditional sort of archetype that we have of men being men and pursuing women and women being pursued and being being the sort of deciders of where the affection should go and whether they decide to accept it or not. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. I think that's just sort of the way the music is. And let's face it, the music is very romantic and it's meant to sort of um be popular and be sort of felt by a lot of people and um i don't know i just think it'd be a harder sell if things were a little more gender neutral you know it might appeal to less people or people might be turned off by it i don't know i just the latin culture is is pretty steeped in their traditions and sort of their ways of doing things and like i think it's fine that this is the way uh, that things are. But um, it got me thinking about myself sort of as a teacher and am I using my position to further gender equality as somebody who has uh, become very well known for doing a very modern or very mm, you know lot not traditional style of dance I think it's my job to also be someone who pushes for gender equality, at least in his actions. You know, while I definitely try to push into my words as much as I can, I think sort of everything that I do should be something where gender equality is important and, and gender equality is pushed. Um, so I always think about like when Evie and I teach, um, I'm always trying to make sure that I don't talk too much just to the guys and that I focus too much on just my one part, at least my one part as a leader. That's definitely something I don't want to do. And so 
I always have this sort of clock in my head that says, hey, look, you've, you've talked enough. The followers need to have their attention be given to them as well. And so Evie's very, very good at like jumping in and sort of finding these little points uh, where I'm talking where she's like, okay, the followers need to know this. They need to know this. Let me talk about this. And as soon as she does that, like I know I'm like, okay, she's also sending me a signal to step back let her take the lead, so to speak, and um, teach the followers um, technique that's really important for them. So I think just as a guy, I'm, I would naturally be uh, obviously better at teaching the guy's portion. It doesn't mean that Evie could not teach the guy's portion. It doesn't mean that I couldn't teach the female portion. It just means these are you know the natural roles that we sort of grew up in. But I think it's important to make sure that we always, um, that we don't let any one side sort of dominate. And I think in uh, a culture that had, at least a, a dance culture, that has kind of traditionally been, uh, you know, more male focused, I guess, uh, it's really, really nice to see so many great followers coming out and all teaching and not only teaching, um, what has traditionally been female roles, i.e. following. Interacting with each other and how they should be teaching with each other. Um, just having fun and, and being actual partners. So I think that's great. Um, which makes me sad because I love her absolutely to death. Um, what I really, so sometimes I have to teach with somebody else. And if that is the case, they don't always feel comfortable taking on that sort of role. They don't always feel comfortable talking. They don't necessarily feel like they have the experience or the um, teaching ability to convey sort of things that I and that's fine. And that falls on me. And I'm more than willing to expand my role. Each other and not really accommodate each other, I think. you take you know you never want to feel like you're only um, you're only being taught to by one section or one teacher or they're only teaching to people that aren't you you know every student in a class should feel like I got something out of this class I learned something and I was very um, uh, engaged by that and I appreciated that you know and so when she's talking Right, like I'm, I'm not just standing there and kind of waiting for my turn. I'm listening to what she is saying, and I'm thinking of ways to enhance that, to augment what she said, you know, uh, or to just kind of file it away and go, all right, you know what, I can refer to this later because it's gonna come up again. If she talks about um, like weight distribution and how much weight should be on which foot or where your foot should be you know, during a dip or something like that. When I come up to another dip, I'll be like, remember we talked about this, how your weight should be on your left foot and you should be leaning and be approximately 80-20 in terms of your weight. Uh, well, we're gonna do that again. You know, Evie brought up a good point, da 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 da. See, and then I can work off of that. And she does the same thing. You know, I'll talk about leaving or something. I'll talk about how, uh, like your position as a guy, where you wanna be. And then she'll be like, now followers, in order to assist in order to make this this move happen, you want to be here, or you want to lead there. And so we're both very good at that, sort of bouncing off each other, but you're not always gonna get that depending upon the partner you're with and sort of how your relationship as teachers has developed. And so teacher. Contributing 
because that's need to have as many uh, strong female representatives just as much as guys do. So another thing I sort of wanted to talk about is sort of how to my thought process on leading and the best things about leading is and how they're accordingly. Um, if you start to get closer to your partner and she tenses up a little bit or is a little bit scared or is a little bit nervous, you know what, that's okay, I back up. You know, I give her that space that she needs and we can do more open things. If the song suddenly speeds up and I speed up and I can tell she's uncomfortable with that, I can slow that back down again. You know, she doesn't want that. On the flip side, you know, if, if we, the song is, you know, maybe a little slower, maybe a little more romantic and I decide to get a little closer, and then she's enjoying that and she conveys that to me that I'm gonna stay there and we're gonna do more intimate moves and intimate things because that's what she wants. So as I'm dancing, I'm always trying to understand the feeling of my partner, how she's feeling, what she's saying to me. And this is not necessarily a verbal thing. In fact, it's almost certainly not verbal because you're not gonna talk during the fucking dance. Um, a lot of it is just based off of her energy, her comfort levels and sort of how she's reacting to what I'm doing. Facial expressions, um, yeah, and just overall feeling. You know, if I'm doing a move and she just can't quite do it, she's either doesn't have a particular set of skills, which is fine, you know, or she doesn't want to do the move. And guess what? It, it doesn't matter her reasons why she wants to or why she does not want to do the move your reaction to that should be the same it should be aha this move is a no-go we'll try something else and most likely we'll try something that um, adds a little more distance oftentimes you know closeness on that level can be um, can be scary it can make someone nervous especially newer followers you know they're just not quite used to it yet and um, that's okay. But as a leader, you need to be aware of that and you need to be aware of how they're feeling and what feelings they're conveying so you can react and adjust to it properly. And I think that's my biggest pet peeve with a lot of guys who they're just unaware. You know, they're bumping into those guys that are always bumping into people, those guys that are just throwing girls around, they're using way too much force that are you know uh, prioritizing flash over substance it's not good like you can do really cool moves if you want to but it's more important for the woman to be comfortable enjoy herself and then her look good before you decide that you need to look good as a guy as a leader you're not actually leading what you're doing is you're following the feelings and energy and emotion of your partner thing that's really what you got to understand and as a follower in actuality what you're doing is you're leading with your energy and your emotion and the way your body is conveying itself to your leader and so i didn't really understand this until i like started following and really started getting into it and realizing that like I am conveying energy to my partner and the way I do a move is sending him signals and if he picks up on those signals then he can adjust to me and he can make this dance even more connected and that's really what connection is it's two people being aware of each other feeling each other out and dancing in the way that the other person would want their dance to be you know Every so often you see this guy who is just, he's doing the basic step and he's trying to be cool and trying to take things slow. And there's a girl like just kicking away, doing Dominican and it's like, what's going on? Or vice versa. The guy's like open and doing Dominican and the girl's like trying to like, like I, I don't do Dominican. Like I'm trying to do body rolls and be cool. I'm like, it doesn't work. And it's, you know, it's just two people that aren't connected in that sense. And so your connection gets deeper the more sensitive you are to your partner and the more you try to pay attention to how they're feeling, what they can do, what they want to do. 
And so as leaders, that should be your goal. And as followers, your goal should be to try to be as expressive as possible. If a move is bad, frown, stiffen up. Ugh. It's, it's good. You should be doing that. I think most guys are pretty nice. Like most guys want to give you a good dance. They want to show you a good time. They want you to ask them again or be okay with you asking them again. And if they don't get any signals, then they're just going to kind of assume that what they're doing is okay. And then later on, if you're like, I hate that guy. He didn't, he didn't respect, you know, he didn't understand my feelings. I'm like, well, if you don't give him anything, he's got nothing to go on. I think most guys, if they had enough to go on, would adjust to that. You know, if you if you really kind of push a guy away, you know, I'd like to think that he goes, oh, shit, I'm being pushed away. <laughs> That's not good. I should try something else. Now, of course, there's going to be those guys out there that just fling girls around, that push girls, that don't, that, that will never get it. But I think a lot more guys are in the category of, I would get it if I got enough of a signal. And so... Followers, I, I deeply implore you, don't send mixed signals to your leader. If you like something, let them know that you like it. And I think that's really important. Guys kind of know when they're doing something wrong. Push him away, like make When it comes to reading people, I think they're better at it than guys. And again, generalizing, totally generalizing. I mean, this is not true in every case and not be true in most cases, but this is just sort of the traditional roles that people have been put, sort of where they're from. That's fine. You know, but I think the more, um, the more androgynous we can get and the more uh, connected we can get, the better it is for dance and the better it is for the world in general. And when I talk about androgyny, um, basically what I'm talking about is like guys dancing with guys, women dancing with women, uh, you know, women leading, guys following, you know, any sort of thing that goes against traditional men lead, women follow archetype that we have. I think the more that you can do that, the better. And the nice part is, especially in the Bay Area, we have become pretty darn androgynous in that sense and you're seeing a lot of guys dancing with guys and women dancing with women and um you know women leading men following and 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 you know we're breaking down those barriers and those stereotypes now and i think it's fantastic and this is the first time i've really noticed it over the course of the last year or two years that that it's happening at almost every place that i go to and especially in bachata which tradition you know not traditionally but more recently has become more sensual dance but you would think that would actually keep people away because guys would be like oh, we're getting too close we're doing sensual stuff but like it actually seems to be opening people up which i think is fantastic you know the more that people can um, break down those barriers and get closer and closer to gender equality the better you know i would love to see a time where it's not you know guys always asking girls and girls standing and waiting for themselves to be asked. I would love to see girls just go up to the guy that they want and ask him to dance. I would love to see girls go up to girls they want to dance with and just ask them to dance. Guys go up with guys. I, I, I just want, I want to see a world where hands are out and people are just going for the people that they want to dance with and everybody's just mixing and matching and like you can be a leader one dance and be a follower the next dance. Who knows? You know, it's just sort of up to those two people and up to their choice. And I think that would be fantastic. I think that'd be a wonderful thing. And I think that would make the bachata world so much more inviting. And I think that has, you know, really positive, um, positive ripples for the rest of the world. You know, being able to sort of stand up and be like, hey, look, I dance bachata. I don't acknowledge your gender roles. 
I don't I don't fall into these categories. I'm just a bachata dancer. That's it. Lead follow doesn't matter. You know, I'm just a dancer. There you go. And we can do that. We can do that if we keep going with the gender equality and the androgyny of the dance that I'm seeing now in bachata and, and even and especially in other dances too. Like this is not just a bachata exclusive thing. And I'm really glad for that. You're seeing it in Zouk, you're seeing it in Kizomba and Salsa to a lesser extent. And I hope it continues. I hope it's something that we keep doing because it's it can only be positive. You know? It makes me think that I've always felt bachata attracted people that were more open. And the reason I say that is because it, you know, it is a close dance. It can be. Certainly, um, in its more popular iteration now, uh, sensual bachata has become a lot more close. And don't think you would get into the dance unless you were already an open person or you were trying to be more open. And oftentimes I have found that people that are already open or that are trying to be more open aren't just open with their selves or their bodies. They become more open with their emotions and they become more open with their minds and they open themselves to new ideas and new ways of doing things. You know, and so I think that bachata could eventually become something that we hold up as, look, look at how far we've come. Look at the gender equality that is in it now. You know, everybody out there could take an example from bachata and just be like, you know what? I don't have to keep things the way they were. I don't have to keep the traditional gender roles the way they are. I can do things differently. And bachata is proof that this works. And if we could have that, I think that is a really, really noble goal for the dance and for everyone in it. And I think it's something we should all aspire to and try to become. Uh, so, I think, so I've always been, um, I've always been a very logical, intellectual person, as you can probably guess by this blog and just kind of the way I talk, stuff like that. Most people know this about me. But dance is, it was really the thing that opened me up to my emotions, to my heart, to this sort of primal side to myself, this, this side that can't really be explained through intel intelligence and logic. Um, but leading appeals to me because I get to indulge sort of both sides. The physical side of me really like maximizing sort of the feeling of the move and like, you know, this move at this time is gonna be the most impactful and the most, um, garner the most emotion, you know, but then also being emotional and being creative and just letting things sort of go to the wind and trying to um, tap into the the pulse of the dance and the pulse of my partner as much as possible. And that's very much an emotional thing. Um, but as a leader, I've always felt like you can't lose yourself in a dance too much. Um, I've always thought it was like, like 1%, maybe half a percent. You have to sort of stay aware of because that's the 1% that keeps your partner safe. Um, you never want to be that guy that is pushing too hard, doing move too forcefully, or worse, slamming your partner into somebody else or injuring them. You know, if you lose yourself too much in the dance, if you lose that level of awareness, then your partner is at risk. You're, you're both at risk. And so as a leader, that's something you want to make sure you always maintain is that little sliver of control. A little sliver of just enough to make sure she doesn't get hurt. But I've noticed when I follow, I don't even need to hold that 1%, which is great. You want to hold just enough to be aware of your own personal safety. But honestly, a lot of that falls onto the leader. And so it was crazy to actually follow and realize that I was holding on to that sliver. And that was always there. And that 
does create a small level of disconnect. You know, it's kind of like dancing with glasses. Like, I don't like to do it. I want to take them off, and I want to just, you know, put my head right here on the girl and just feel it and have it be amazing. You know, but, like, I need the glasses to see, and so if I'm wearing them, I can't press my face into her face or something like that, or I can't fling my head too fast. The glasses might fall off, you know, and so that little sliver of control is needed to keep my glasses on my face, just like that little sliver of control is needed to make sure your partner doesn't get injured, doesn't get hurt. Um, but this is why following is so great, is because I can really, truly let go and just feel the moves, feel the music only, and turn my brain off. And um, that is an amazing feeling. I think that's how we can sell leading to more guys. And I think that's how we can get more guys into following, is to sort of let them know, hey, look, you you can turn your brain off here. You don't have to always sort of be thinking and be planning ahead. You can just be in the moment and feel and enjoy. And that's incredible. That is just Oh my God, ridiculous. And I think on the flip side, for followers, like how do we sell leading to them? I think letting them know that, hey, look, you get to be in control now. You're the one that gets to guide. You're the one that says, okay, I feel this way. I want to um, project that to my partner. Instead of being the one receiving, you're now the one giving. And and sort of framing it as giving and, and uh, pouring your emotion out into your partner um, and being the one to sort of uh, guide the direction uh, that the dance goes, both physically and emotionally, I think is a really, really interesting thing. And I think it's something that is missing if you're always following. Because yes, you're always in the moment, you're always emotional, but you don't have as much control over where those emotions go and how they're supposed to feel. A lot of, of following is interpreting, is, is getting signals in and then doing stuff with that. Well, as a leader, you get to give those signals and get to give out those feelings and emotions. And so I think for followers, this is the way that we can sort of frame it to sell leading to them, is to let them know that they're the ones that get to now do the guides. They're the ones that be the guides, excuse me. And I think that's a really good thing. I think like letting followers know that this is something that they can, um, that they can do and they can control, I think, is is really good and, and honestly it's gonna help both sides you know and I think finally um, I think we could all learn a lot from the other side I think followers can learn a lot from leaders and I think leaders can learn a lot from followers and I think men can learn a lot from women and I think women can learn a lot from men and yeah we are different I'm not going to sit here and say that we are completely equal, all right? And that may offend some people. Yes, women can do whatever men can do. Men can do whatever women can do. Sure. But do we think the same? Do we approach things the same? Are we exactly the same? No. <laughs> We're all different. We all have been raised differently. We all come from different backgrounds and all come from different things. What I'm asking is let's make dance a place of tolerance acceptance and equality as an ideal and something to reach for. Are we ever going to completely achieve it? Probably not. Probably not just because we're all humans and you know there's inevitably going to be people that want to keep things a certain way or don't want things to be a certain way or just intolerant in general and want you know men should be men, women should be women like you know do I disagree with that? Not completely. You know, those roles are there and those roles are important because it does teach us how to be who we are, but I don't think it's something that we have to adhere to all the time. I think traditions are great as long as they are still relevant to the current landscape, as long as they still hold um, truths there that still apply. Truths change and age. This is why the Constitution is a living document because the Founding Fathers understood, hey, the time that we live in now is not going to be the time of our sons and our future sons and our future daughters. Their world is going to be different, and they're going to need to have different laws and different things apply to them. It's the same thing in dance, and I think it's the same thing in the world in general. You know, the outdated mode of men are men and men are leaders and women are women and women are followers, 
they don't have to be there anymore. And this generation of dancers and this generation of humanity can be the people that really take huge steps towards breaking down those walls and creating real gender equality. And I think it's it starts with us. It starts with us. So the thing that I would say to everybody out there, and hopefully you got through this video and you've enjoyed it, is if you're a man, be a woman. If you're a woman, be a man. And if you're a man, be a man too. And if you're a woman, be a woman too. Just indulge all sides of you. It'll be great. You know, we all have a masculine side and a feminine side. And if you let one starve, you're incomplete. You know, it's okay for me to cry. It's okay for me to feel. It's okay for me to be like, yeah, I have emotions. I feel things. I'm there. You know, and it's okay for women to be like, hey, look, I need to be logical at this point. I need to be intellectual at this point. <sighs> it's okay for me to take the lead. It's okay for, um, it might feel unnatural, but it's definitely, it's a Appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for this uh, whew, long overdue Rockstar Expressions video. Really appreciate it. Keep learning, keep rocking. And a Rockstar, see you. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more videos, you can see the most recent videos here. You can see a recommended playlist here. And if you want to subscribe, you go right here. Thank you so much. Keep learning, keep rocking, and the rock star will see you later.